Uh, I, let me just uh, set, step back from the budget and point out a couple of things uh, in, the, in the theme of inclusiveness, a word that I think we learn to be frightened of over time. Uh, but the world is moving, the world as a whole, India as part of it, is moving from a frenzy for perhaps a decade of being driven by shareholder interests to stakeholder interests. And uh, in that process, a lot of other people are talking. So the typical reaction we would talk about, and my concern this morning was, how much did the stock market go up or down in India uh, today? It was down 400 points. Uh, but if there was a different newspaper that I turned to every morning, you know, the, the Farmer Street Journal or something like that, it would probably be filled with elation for the last two days. And whatever index they had would probably be filled. And if I was a politician in the government, I'd say, well, that went off pretty well, because that's who's going to vote me into power the, the next time around. So we've, we've got to be cognizant of that. And uh, the, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not making a comment whether this is a good thing or not, but it's just a reality. And I think the second thing is that, as is the case in other parts of the world, the budget is moving from its central position of being the sole policy uh, announcement step. But there's a series of things. So the president's speech, for example, signaled a number of initiatives before this. And if you have read it or you go back and read it or you've heard it, you'll see that a lot of the things that are in the program and should be coming up will be there. The financial markets, as Tian correctly pointed out, especially the short-term oriented ones, the stock markets, will react to immediateness. So a lot of that stuff was expected early on. There were promises, uh, there were expectations of increases in the insurance sector, the banking sector, uh, disinvestment. All of that uh, you know, did not come through at this point in time. Hopefully it will come through. Hopefully we will continue to have in India um, steps towards handing off control of government-run organizations in a methodical fashion to non-government-run uh, organizations. Uh, again, staying at sort of the big picture level, I think uh, uh, what was missing, did you say it was a non-event T and I forget exactly, what I thought the budget was fundamentally boring. There was nothing exciting enough. In fact, I would have thought that even some of the steps that were taken to spend money, I'd have been just as happy to see a 250 instead of a $211 billion budget or a $300 billion budget if it was spent on the right things, number one. And number two, and I think this was the most important thing that was missing, was how are we going to pay for this? So just this budget is no different than the discussion we all have in our homes. Should my daughter get a new iPhone or not? And should her brother get a BlackBerry at the same time? Should my son get a used car or not? And there's a balancing act in all of that. There's a balancing act, and it's not driven purely by economic considerations. There are emotional situations here, no, not very different from electoral issues that you are playing to at that point in time. So you know, it, there, there, there is that balance. But there is the practical and pragmatic need that in the end you've got to pay for this stuff. So if there had been a discussion around, even an indication of, you know, kind of along the lines of the Federal Reserve even is somewhat more uh, clear in what it says from the days of Alan Greenspan when I've heard senators say, we never understood what he said. Uh, but even they, you know, give you their general bias as to what they're expecting to do and give you a hint towards direction of policy or interest rate specifically, um, I think specifying some of these things that were widely ex expected or not would be uh, a helpful thing. 